and in the interest of fairness after visiting with Adam Wainwright we welcome John Lester to the broadcast this afternoon John thanks for taking some time with us yeah guys no problem been a, such a terrific year for you guys and in, in down the stretch no exception uh, for you at 18 and four I mean I I can't imagine and you're a guy that's been to four all star games and won a couple of World Series but I can't imagine having much more fun than it looks like you've had this year. <laughs> yeah it's been uh, it definitely is interesting in our in our clubhouse and dugout uh, during games and after games and before games all that stuff we uh, we definitely are not short on having fun here. Is that a function of winning. I mean you've been involved with winning teams in the past. I mean do, do, don't all winning teams have fun or is it something a little different brand of fun here. Well yeah obviously when you when you lose you can't have too much fun but yeah the winning helps but I think it's just the atmosphere that Joe brings and, and kind of just lets us be us and lets us police ourselves and you know obviously we do the, the crazy dress ups and uh, you know all that fun stuff when we go on the road and we got the, the NFL Sunday coming this weekend so um, yeah I mean I think it's just a product of everything we've got a lot of different personalities on this team that uh, like to have fun like obviously Rossi and uh, a few other guys and obviously the young the uh, the youngness the youthfulness that we have on this team helps it uh, keeps us older guys feeling uh, feeling good. We'll take another look at Wilson Contreras take a look like a foul tip off the hand. Oh man. Just no good place to put that throwing hand apparently. Hey as we discuss catchers here John let's let's talk about David Ross a little bit and you you brought his name up I mean you your friendship your professional relationship with David has been no secret of course and uh, we've been reading some things that down the stretch where you have been extremely complimentary toward him and, and how he's kind of helped your 18 win season this year. Give us some insight. What, what exactly do you do you mean when you talk about all that. Well I, I got done saying something about it this morning. Uh, I, I think Rossi's a guy that you know you don't really appreciate until you're with him every day you know until you get to see what he brings to the table uh, even when he's not playing um, you know it's hard to be a bench player uh, and, and bring energy every day and he does that and it's unbelievable because I mean there's days obviously where you know you sit on the bench but you're kind of just tuned out and not really paying attention to what's going on but this guy every day is locked in cheering his guys on always brings energy um, like I said before always having fun so I, I think for me that's the most impressive thing. Um, you know and obviously the, the, the relationship we have when, when we go out there and compete is is uh, is completely different. Yeah we're showing folks the uh, the ceremony that the Cubs had that you guys had for him yesterday kind of celebrating his career in this final weekend on the home regular season schedule. I, it looked like that caught him by surprise yesterday. It did and, and actually a lot of us didn't know he didn't know about it so we're, we're glad that it didn't come up in conversation in the clubhouse before the game. And, he told us when uh, when me and Lack and, and Riz got out here early he's like what are you guys doing out here so early and we couldn't really couldn't really say anything so um, I'm glad it, it did catch him I'm glad his family was able to come and, and be a part of it. Well John I know that it almost seems that when Rossi's back there and like you said as a bench player coming out he gets more enjoyment getting you through a game than he does in any other component of whether it's hitting and he's gotten some big hits in your game so it looks like this package deal you can <laughs> sense that he wants so bad for you to finish at the at the level and rate that you're going right now. Yeah and I, he I remember him saying a little while back during the season that um, when he was in Atlanta and kind of took over the full backup catchers role behind Brian McCann you know it, it became so important for him that day to win and he didn't care how they got there what they did um, but that day just meant like it meant so much to him to win that day because that was his only day to catch in a week. Um, so to hear him say that I feel like he takes that same approach uh, on, on the games that, that I go out there and obviously he expects a lot out of me so we have some some friendly talks in between innings and sometimes on the mound that uh, that don't go so well for me. Yeah I, 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 can, I, I can imagine here with uh, him scoring right from first base yeah. you could see the parachute coming out. Yeah. And uh, and getting that run as you drove it in. But what visually I know what he does behind the plate as it works in. You don't want to be out there shaking your head no a lot but what do you like the way his setup and everything about his approach. Uh, I don't think people understand how important it is for a pitcher to, to be inviting to throw to a catcher. Yeah I, I mean obviously he's a he's a bigger a bigger target back there. Um, 
which I think helps me. You know, a lot of my stuff is, is side to side with a little depth at the end, and he does such a good job of letting those pitches ride and, and catching those to where it, it almost looks like a strike as opposed to being a strike. So that helps. Um, and just everything else he brings, the game calling, all that stuff, the game management really uh, keeps me in line. Hey, John, we really appreciate the visit. Thanks for taking some time, and good luck down the stretch. All right, guys, I appreciate it.